Hey guys, Irene here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a review on Canon EOS R10. You guys seem to love it when I review more budget-friendly gear. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. Few main features of R10 are the 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, the ability to record 4K video, and borrowed from the R3, its image processor allows for high-speed continuous shooting and provides amazing autofocusing capabilities. And it's very small and lightweight. The price is $980 for the body only, or you can buy it with the 18 to 45 millimeter kit crop lens for $1,100 or the 18 to 150 for $1,380. This camera is marketed for beginner photographers who want to take that first step into the world of mirrorless and for influencers and content creators because of its video capabilities and the flip screen. If you guys would like to know more about the technical specs, which I'm not an expert in, I will link a video from DP Review. It's great and you'll find all of the other info you might be interested in there. I will be focusing more on testing the gear at a real life photo shoot and showing you the images and the video I got. Our first location was at Socality event for photographer at Moss Studios in Calgary and it was super fun. If you're in Canada and USA, check out Socality community. I will leave their link in the description. Uh, they organize events like this all the time and I love going to these and meeting other photographers in the area. I used the R10 with the RF 35mm 1.8 lens, which makes it kind of a 50mm because it is a full frame lens on a crop body and the first thing I noticed using the setup is of course its size and weight it's so tiny compared to my usual r5 and the 85 1.2 lens but I personally love it it's definitely one of the biggest selling points of this camera it's just so light and compact and it feels really nice in my hand it has that typical Canon feel to it and reminded me of my first camera from the Rebel series. The autofocus is really fast and I had no problem focusing on the model's eyes. I set my AF area to whole area, I set it to detect people and enable the eye detection and the camera does the rest. It's probably one of my favorite features on the new mirrorless cameras. It makes it so so easy for beginners to get sharp in focus portraits, something I struggled with when I started out. One thing that is quite typical of the lower end crop sensor cameras is that they are not as sharp as a full frame and you can see it especially when you are zooming in a lot. So here is a full body shot, this is the raw image and it looks quite nice and sharp but when we zoom it in a lot it does start to lose some detail. And I also did notice that I needed to sharpen the images in post more than I would with the full frame. And again, it's just very typical thing for a lower end crop sensor camera. If you're mostly posting online and not printing very large prints, I don't think this is a big deal, but it's worth mentioning that you will get less detail with the R10 than the full frame camera. I think if I posted these shots on Instagram and didn't specify what gear I used, I don't think anyone would have guessed that these were taken with an entry-level camera and lens. What do you guys think? The second shoot I did outside and I shot it the way I normally would with beautiful sunset backlight. And this time I used the RF 50mm 1.8. This is a full frame lens as well, so on the R10 it's more like the 85mm, which is what I prefer for portraits anyways, so sometimes a crop factor can be an advantage because the 51.8 is quite inexpensive and on the R10 you can get the look of the 85 with it. Thank you. 
For this next shot, I wanted to compare the setup to my usual R5 with the 85mm 1.2 and it is a very unfair comparison but I thought it would be interesting to see the difference. Obviously, we can see a big difference in bokeh size, blurriness, uh, the separation of the model from the background, and generally, you will get less depth of field and bokeh with the crop. Uh, plus, we are shooting on 1.2 compared to 1.2. But let me give you a tip on how to get the best out of your crop setup or the slower lenses to get that signature blurry background that I love. So here I position my model in between the leaves of this tree to create some interest but notice that the background is really far. The background is the trees all the way across the river. Here we're creating depth with our surroundings and the more distance between the objects in your photo the better. So make sure that your foreground and the background are far apart from each other and then you can position the model in between. Also, this nice sunset backlight is helping to separate the model from the background even more. So together, the surroundings plus the light create the depth instead of relying on your gear to do it for you. So as a bokeh connoisseur, I'm a bit conflicted because it's definitely different from what I'm used to, but there is just something about crop sensor bokeh that I actually quite like. I like the distinct outline of the bokeh, it makes it really stand out and it almost reminds me of some old vintage lenses, they have that similar look. So I was actually surprised that I really enjoyed this texture, almost gritty look that I got with this setup. Um, and as usual, let me know what you guys think. You guys know that I love Canon RP. It's the budget camera I recommend for beginners and both R10 and RP cost about the same, so I wanted to compare the two. On the left, we have R10 with the 50mm 1.8 and on the right, I have the RP with the 85mm f2 macro. I thought these two setups should be comparable and both uh, lenses were shot wide open. So to me, these look almost the same, even when I zoom in. So which one would I recommend? I would say if your focus is primarily on photo, then you should go for the RP. It's full frame and that's really important in my opinion for photo quality. But if your focus is on video, then go for R10 since it shoots 4K video and is super light. But it's a really hard choice between the two. And finally, let's talk about video. You are watching behind the scenes footage shot on R10 with the RFS 18 to 45 millimeter lens. This is a crop kit lens that you can purchase with the R10 and it's super small and light. So I think the quality of this footage is beautiful. My husband who films my videos uh, told me that he was really impressed with the autofocusing. It was fast and responsive but this camera does not have in-body stabilization and even though we were filming this on a gimbal there was still quite a bit of shake in some instances so it's definitely a con for me it would have been a perfect behind the scenes camera if it had in-body stabilization but you gotta remember that this camera is less than a thousand dollars Obviously, you won't have this problem when your camera is just stationary on a tripod like in this footage that I filmed in my office and here's another clip I filmed for a TikTok vertically. 
So this is it for the video. I hope it was helpful and let me know what other cameras and lenses you would like me to review. Don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!